I have finally been able to acquire some cooling for this new tube I've acquired. So I've decided to make a little bit more of an in-depth video showing how it, you, how it works and what you may be able to use it for. So this is the BSV-10 X-ray tube. It's a structural analysis tube, also called diffraction tube, as it utilizes a very low energy output in the X-rays, and uh, which is emitted through beryllium windows. So in this case, we're making a lot of X-rays, absolute huge amount, but with a very low energy in each of them. So, it's made by Svetlana Röntgen, same company which produces my other X-ray tube, as I've shown in another video. And it's similarly sized, a little bit taller as you may see, but quite similarly wide. And it's definitely not a small tube, as you may be able to see by the size of my hand, for example. It's about two decimeters tall. But the tube has three beams of X-rays in the form of three different beryllium windows. As you may see, we have a round, small one on the side here. The main beam is emitted through this one, a large beryllium window in the middle, in the front of the tube, and another small one by the side. And on the back, we have the ports where you pump in some coolant for the tube. And as you can see, they're a, li they're a little bit wet, mine. And that's because I've already run the tube a few times using coolant. I myself use oil, mo motor oil, but it's supposed to be run with water. But I cannot do that at the current moment in time. So I'm running it with some oil. So the tube has three connector connections on top, which I'll display now, right here. So if you look with the beryllium window pointed at us, you can see the, that the three cables are quite lined up. And by this we can tell which one does what. So the left one is filament, the middle one is high voltage cathode, and the right one is filament again. So these two is used to heat the filament, and this one, which is sadly broken on mine, is the high voltage cathode. So what you'll do is use any of these as the plus and minus side. For the low voltage, it doesn't matter which one is plus and which one is minus, and you'll supply it with, if you're running it at the rated power, which I believe is 1 kilowatts, it's about 5.6 volts to power it. Uh, while in my situation, I'll be running it at about 200 or 400 watts and run it the filament at 3.5 volts. The anode connection doesn't really exist, as the entire black part of the tube here, the entire bottom part, is copper, huge kind of block of copper, which has been hollowed out, and it's the anode itself, entire copper here, even the connections for the coolant. So you can pretty much just take a little alligator clip, clip it on one of these ports, and that's your anode, or place a wire underneath, it also works. It's utilizing a cobalt target, this one, specific tube, the BSV-10, which will end a very short distance between the anode and cathode, so it will emit some pretty low x-rays, pretty low energy x-rays, I'd say, with a characteristic output of about 7 keV, as it utilizes cobalt, but the majority will probably be in the vicinity of 10 and 20 keV in energy. So it's a pretty interesting tube. It gets hot pretty fast. It depends on what you're running it of. When I'm running it at, as said, between 200 or 400 watts, it can survive maybe last 30 or 40 seconds before it heats up too much to be safely run anymore. When cooling it, you want to pump in 
about 6 to 12 liters per minute into the tube to successfully cool it enough to be run pretty much as long as you want if it's if the liquid you're using is pulling enough heat away so it's anyways it's a pretty interesting tube i'd say it's absolutely amazing the amount of x-rays it emits is crazy so you'll have to be extremely careful with it the beryllium windows makes it so there's pretty much no filtration whatsoever in the energy range and it can do some pretty horrific damage if you're x-ray for example yourself and either way it's not that good for imaging as it utilizes such a low energy at least it's not the imaging as an amateur would do at seeing electronic devices inside electronic devices it does work for such things as plastic phone chargers but when it comes for more like aluminium objects or hands for example it's not a viable option i'd say but anyways enough with the boring parts running the tube now let's actually do some stuff with it as the output is insane and you can do some pretty cool stuff like burning salt giving radiation burns in salt for example or lit up intensifying screen or zinc sulfide old club paint or just max different meters which can detect this energy range so i hook it up to my coolant system and i'll be right back so i got the absolute clusterfuck of a setup now connected uh, here's the tube as you may see Got a bunch of cables going to it, and here's the messy oil pump stuff. I can't recommend this method of cooling whatsoever. As you may see by the stains, it's very messy, it gets everywhere, and yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of you might know, wood or oil sucks. But it works for me, as I can't use water. Here's the tube, you can see the anode going to one of the coolant connections and here's the one of the filament the negative part of the filament the filament uh, voltage and here's the positive part of the filament voltage and here's the high voltage cathode i've also placed it on one of these plastic stuff with with ice inside just to kind of add some extra coolant to it as it still gets very hot, even with this cooling, cooling method, and oil is just very bad at cooling in general. But that's that, not much I can do. So, anyways, I got a bunch of screens set up. It's a blue intensifier screen right here, a green one over there, and I can set up another green screen, which is in this HA cassette. Just like so. So now you can see each of the beams in the form of visible light, which is pretty cool. So I'll run it, and you should see some pretty decent glow. Though this camera is very bad at capturing any kind of light in a dark environment. So it might be not too good of a quality, but it's something. So I'll hook everything up, including the pump, go back, turn on filament, Turn on the pump, and then turn on the high voltage. Okay, I moved the screens a little bit, so it might be easier to see any glow. So I'll now begin by turning on the filament at about 3.5 volts. So if I turn off the light, you should see some glow emerging from the tube. Now I'll turn on the pump, which is quite loud. So now we're pumping oil through the x-ray tube and finally we'll start the high voltage. 3, 2, 1. And you might be able to see some glow on the x-ray screen and the intensify screens. Which is pretty cool. So I'm turning that off. And 
and uh, now we'll do some more fun things with it. Because now we'll actually burn something, give something radiation burns. And this this experiment it will be salt, normal household salt. So I got this little old plastic film tube. Um, yeah. And I put it right in front of the beam, the big main beam. And I also put another uh, cap with some salt in front of one of the small beams. And I'll run it up for about uh, five minutes. That seems to be the longest I can run mine before the pump itself starts getting quite hot. But you should be able to see some pretty cool burns in the salt. So I'll play some of these in front. And just like that, they're positioned in front of the beam. Well, the beams, as you may see. And so I'll back off. I have it in a little bit of a walk-in closet, as you might see, with uh, some concrete walls, so nothing makes it, makes it through. So I'm quite safe. This is kind of where I control it. Got a bit of a lamp here, might move it. Turn on the lights. So I got a, a DP66M to measure how much backscatter is coming in my direction. A DP2 if I'm running another type of tube, the one I used for pictures, because it has a lot of backscatter. The variable voltage supply for the filament and the high voltage down there. So I'll bring up a clock so you can see how much time has passed. I set up the radiation. And here it is. It's an old tank clock. Might be hard to see, which is too bad. I'm doing this in the, on the spot. And for anyone wondering, I'm sitting behind a glass wall here, which pretty much stops all radiation coming in my direction. And of course it's a cabinet full with uranium ceramic. <laughs> so, let's see if I can reduce the reflection like that. If I turn everything on, run it for about 5 minutes, which of course I'll skip most of that part. So what do I begin with? Maybe turning on the radiation detector to see any backscatter. It will be very bad at backscatter as the energy is too low to really penetrate the detector, but it's better than nothing. So I'll turn on the filament. As you can see, about 3.5 volts. Now I'll turn on the pump. And then the high voltage. Here. A little bit of backscatter, which is detectable, though it's a lot more in reality. So I'll wait about 5 minutes and we'll check in on the salt, which has been irradiated. So, be back soon. So, it has about gone about 5 minutes now, close enough. So we'll turn off the high voltage, turn off the pump, and then turn off the filament. And also the detector. Back again in the horrific x-ray room which is, looks absolutely terrible but let's check in on the first piece of salt which was in the side beam, the small one. And look at that, we have a burn in the salt itself. Hope the camera can focus correctly. Now ain't that fascinating. That's very, very interesting, very cool. And it's the salt itself. If I remove it, it seems to have been stuck. So I'll shake it a bit. With my finger, it got stuck to the plastic container. If I can close it, you see, it's gone. But now, let's check in on the more interesting canister. The, main, the salt which was in the main beam. And look at that. We have a burn mark in the shape of the beam itself. 
Well, that's pretty cool. If you shake it, it goes away, pretty much. Some salt still left. That's incredible. It's from the radiation is breaking the crystals and deforming them in the salt. And that causes it to kind of change color, which is absolutely in incredible. Don't think I have seen anyone else try this. So that's pretty cool. Some interesting results. But I'm not done yet. I still have a few things left, like measuring the radiation and also showing some other cool stuff, like uh, uh, leading up some old zinc sulfide. The same stuff which was used in radium paint. So I have a cancer of zinc sulfide. Let's see. Right here. Old zinc sulfide plot paint. I will place that in main beam and record it to show if it lights up. It does, I, but I really hope the camera can catch it. So I'll place that in the beam. So it's now pretty much right in the beam. I might move it a bit closer. I hope the camera will catch the glow. It should be quite intense. So let's turn it on. I don't think I've used any cooling for this short exposure. So I'll turn on the filament. Turn off the lights. Now turn on the high voltage. And hopefully, you can see that it's glowing, which is absolutely incredible. That's pretty cool. I hope it was visible. In real life, it's glowing amazingly, just like if you were shining a UV light on it. But my camera is pretty bad. But I hope it was quite interesting. So now let's do a final thing, which is, well, two more things. I'll put the camera in the beam and also measure the beam radiation exposure with the DP2 and also the radio scan. So I have now set up the DP2 in front of the beam from about 40 centimeters away. As you may see, I have removed the cooling as these short exposures will not really heat it up enough to be any danger to the life of the tube. And as you can see, there's a huge mess. Never use oil. But I'll place the camera in front of the DP2. I'll have it on the 200R per hour mode. And hopefully, we should see the scale. Show a pretty high uh, reading. So, here's the DP2. Turn it on 200 door. Check the zero ring. It's good enough. So it's on 200 door per hour mode now. So let's turn on the X-ray machine. And see how much we get. Turning on filament, but let's turn it on. Three, two, one. I hope it was quite intense. I said I cannot see. As you may see also I have the case removed as the aluminium absorbs too many x-rays. But I hope that was quite cool. Let's uh, place the camera in the beam itself and then do some backscatter measurements with the radio scan. Okay, the camera is now right in front of the ba main beam. So I'll turn on the filament. It's warming up, now it's on, and I'll turn on the high voltage in 3, 
two, one. That seemed quite in intense. I hope it was a visible amount. <laughs> it certainly should be. But anyways, let's go to the final part. So, here's the radio scan, there's the tube. Now let's check how much backscatter and stuff is coming in my direction. Well, the operating table's direction. I'm still sitting behind this uh, glass wall door. Otherwise, when I'm no normally using it. Let's turn on the filament. Let's check if it's glowing. Seems like it. Let's turn the high voltage on. Let's check the radio scan. Yeah, look at that. That's a pretty intense back scare. Yeah, it's quite scary. You don't want that. Oof. So you can see, it's a pretty dangerous thing. A lot of backscatter and a lot can probably not even be measured by the detector itself as it has such a low energy. But anyways, this was hopefully a understandable video. I only had pretty much one attempt as I could not remove the cooling over and over again from the tube and such. That's it. I'd not recommend an amateur or someone who has not really handled a lot of x-rays or radioactive material to buy such a tube like this. It's incredibly dangerous, it's mainly because of the intense amount of low energy x-rays emitted from the beryllium windows. But that's it. Hope it was interesting and goodbye.